The first thing I'm going to go over is the difference between a metal halide bulb and an HPS bulb. Two different types of bulb, they both are HID, it stands for high intensity discharge, and you can tell the difference in these two lights. One is a little more bulbous and the other one's cylindrical. The more bulbous one is a metal halide, the more cylindrical bulb is an HPS bulb. Some of the newer metal halide bulbs will also be cylindrical, but you'll notice the inner arc tube is going to be more round. The difference in the metal halide versus the HPS bulb, the metal halide typically, typically puts out a uh, more blue spectrum. And what the bluer spectrum tends to do to plants is keep them shorter. The inner nodal growth link tends to be more compact. Ideally, after the veg stage, you'll switch to the HPS. HPS bulb is typically a better bulb for flowering. It's a little more powerful. The plants can facilitate uh, the light a little better. People will start with the metal halide and switch to the HPS bulb, and usually you'll have 10% increase in yields. When it comes to bulb upgrades, there's a number of different upgrades. Do your research, but typically the money is well spent when it comes to the Hortilux. The Hortilux has the highest output of lumens. It also has corrected spectrum for plants and tends to be a good all-around bulb. It tends to do a real good job both in the vegetative state and also in the flowering state. When it comes to your light system, this is probably going to be one of the more expensive items in your grow room. So you want to make sure that you're getting the right item for your grow room. You want to make sure that it has a warranty and you want to make sure that you're going to be happy with it. So I'm going to show you the difference between a magnetic ballast and electronic ballast. The two different types of ballast we're looking at now, one is a magnetic ballast and the other two are electronic ballasts. Electronic ballasts are able to operate lamps at a high frequency because they utilize semiconductor componentry circuitry instead of traditional electromagnetic transformer circuitry. Remember that your electronic ballasts are going to pay for themselves over time because they use 10 to 30 percent less energy than the electromagnetic ballast. And they also create the same amount of light. Also the electronic ballasts operate the lamps at more than 30 hertz whereas your electromagnetic ballasts operate at 60 hertz. The high frequency operation prevents stroboscopic effect, which is flickering of the light, which sometimes can occur with your magnetic ballast. So, you know, when you look at the two ballasts, your electronic ballast may be a few dollars more, but don't be fooled in the long run. This day and age, I think the electronic ballast might be the smart bet. The neat thing about the electronic and the magnetic ballast these days is that they come multi-volt. Not all will, so do your research on which one you're looking at, but I like the ones that come with multi-volt and smart cord. What does this mean for us? Well, if the ballast operates at 120, let's take the 1,000 watt ballast for example, a 1,000 watt ballast will pull roughly 10 amps. If you are running it on a 240 circuit, you are pulling half that amount of amps, so you're running at 5 amps, which typically means a cooler running ballast, which means more life to the ballast. Okay, with the smart bolt valve, we want to run 120. We simply put our 120 cord in it, with, which most of these ballasts come with a 120 cord. If you want to run your ballast 240, you'll need to order the smart cord. Switch it over to 240, simply plug it in, and you have your 240 ending, which will plug in to your 240 outlet. The electronic ballast has the same option. It has a smart cord. The ending is going to be the same. If you want to run 120, you plug it in. And if you want to run 240, you order the smart cord for the electronic ballast, plug it in, and you can run it 240. There's no switching. The electronic ballast will also run metal halide and HPS with no switch. The magnetic ballast, if you want a switchable system, if you want to run your metal halide bulb and your HPS bulb, be certain to get a ballast that is switchable. And on the ballast, you'll see a switch that says MH or HPS. If you order a magnetic ballast and it's a switchable ballast, 
you'll have a toggle switch that will run the ballast either at metal halide or at HPS. The electronic ballast automatically runs either metal halide bulbs or HPS bulbs. Okay, when you're setting your HID system up, you're going to have four components. You have your ballast, you have a cord and a socket, your reflector, and your bulb. And I'm going to show you how to set each of these units up very easy. First off, we want to plug our ballast into a timer. The timers I like to use, especially if you're running only one ballast, are the dual outlet timers that we sell. And the reason I like these is because if you're cooling your light with a fan, you can plug the fan into one side and your ballast into the other side. You'll notice that there's pins around the timer. Each of these pins represents 15 minutes. Simply by pushing the pins down presents on time. So if we wanted to have our light on for 12 hours, we would have them half on and half off. And this red button you want to have remaining in the upright position, otherwise this is manual. So we're going to keep the red button in the upright position, plug our timer in. We notice it's off right now. I like to keep everything off until we have our bulb in. So temporarily I'm going to unplug it and 